Hi, everyone. So moving on with uh, <clears throat> discussion about rotational motion, we ended up uh, talking about torque. So let's elaborate on uh, on torque a little bit, and then we uh, we move from there. First and foremost, what I told you about torque was essentially some sort of a force that is able to rotate an object about as an axis of rotation. This is essentially what torque is defined to be. So analog of force in translational motion or linear motion is torque, which, which is the force that, that is able to potentially rotate something about a pivot point, about an axis of rotation. We call that point a pivot point. Okay, and then I talk about the door, the, uh, the knob and stuff like that, the hinge of the door. Let's elaborate on this a little bit more. The reason why knobs of the doors are f the furthest away from the hinge is because we need a huge, like the, mo the most amount of lever arm in order to make up for the torque that is able to rotate the door around this axis of rotation. So essentially what we what we you know, how how it, uh, essentially uh, essentially the way it works is that in order to open an, or close a door we need some certain amount of torque knowing that this torque is lever arm times some force we can play with these two parameters in order to make up for the sufficient amount of torque that is able to open or close this door and rotate it essentially about this pivot point or axis of rotation. Because we want to use, we are lazy and we want to use the least amount of force from our hand, we need to extend our lever arm and uh, in order to make up for the small force that we are exerting in order to uh, you know, basically end up having sufficient amount of torque in order to rotate the door around this pivot point. Hence, we use the, uh, we, we put the knob very, very far, like uh, far from the hinge in order to make the R big so that we're, we're still with a, with a small amount of force. Let's say a baby can still open or close the door. Whereas if, if the knob of the door was like somewhere here, and this was the hinge, then we would be, ha we would be having a lot more, f we would be needing a lot more force in order to make up for this little amount of lever arm such that we get the sufficient amount of torque in order to open and close the door. If you imagine, then, then it actually, it makes a lot, a lot of sense and it, uh, and it's very uh, parallel to, it's very in sync with your common sense anyways. Samely for wrenches. So we, the reason we use a wrench is essentially having a long lever arm so that when we exert some force on, uh, you know, at this point, we have a long lever arm and that compensates for this, the, the, the amount of torque that we need in order to, you know, you know, screw, uh, or unscrew something. Whereas the case where we don't have a wrench, then we just have this, you know, screw thing and then we have to use our uh, hand. Um, and because of the very, very little amount of lever arm, we can't make up for the sufficient amount of torque that we need in order to unscrew this and, you know, basically, um, and take the, um, the, uh, the screw out. Okay, so that's so far about torque, but let's continue with uh, with general uh, discussions about rotational motion. Remember, in translational motion, we had le uh, we we conventionally we would use um, east and north to be positive directions and west and south to be negative directions. And we would say displacement, velocity, acceleration, and force, all of them are vector quantities. Exactly the same thing happens in rotational motion. So rotational motion, the nature of rotational motion is rotation either clockwise or counterclockwise, right? We don't have any counterclockwise. So we don't have any like something in between or anything like that. Conventionally, we, we denote the, we, and we conventionally, we use negative sign for clockwise rotations and counterclockwise for uh, positive for counterclockwise notation. The reason is 
although it looks really um, not um, you know something that's slightly unexpected I, I would say to uh, to all of you but it essentially makes a lot more sense to have counterclockwise as positive and clockwise to be negative the reason is because we always conventionally in mathematics we always can measure our angles f from the positive uh, x-axis towards above the horizontal line and since this direction is counterclockwise we use positive for this and it's just so weird to measure angles from below the horizontal it's just weird we never if you you know if you have a line that's here that's that you know that's that's angled with respect to your axes you never measure the angle like that it's just weird we always measure our man angles like this therefore counterclockwise is is our positive conventionally is positive direction and counter uh, and clockwise is negative direction the other way you can uh, you can uh, you know you can um, basically solve for or like decide is using your right hand so if you so if something is rotating like that you you um put your all of your fingers along the same direction as your uh, as your rotation and where the your where the where your thumb is um, heading or is directing is exactly the direction of uh, if it's coming towards you is positive and if it's if something is rotating this way and you know you put your fingers along the the direction of rotation and your thumb is pointing away from you this means it's negative so positive direction or counterclockwise negative direction or clockwise direction so these are this is called right hand rule and uh, this is essentially how we can we can get uh, guess uh, if if we are you know unscrewing something and opening loosing a screw or basically uh, tie, uh, tightening um uh, uh, tight, tightening off a, off, off a screw um you know you go like that the screw comes out you go like this and the screw gets in and just you know gets um tight and and get screwed. So um, this is this is about direction of rotational motion.